Okay, so to continue uh, what we... To continue what we started um, before uh, about extravascular um, um, pharmacokinetic, we will talk a little bit about the uh, transport uh, options uh, or this general process that could be involved in the uh, transport of the drug through different membranes in the uh, GI, okay, which is valid also to other uh, absorption processes uh, in um, in other uh, routes of administration if we are talking about extravascular. So um, in general, you will have passive uh, process and you may have active processes and you may have facilitated, okay? Transport. And again, those are the general, uh, let's say, uh, terms or processes that would involved in each one of them uh, may have different, um, uh, let's say, uh, options or examples under each one of them. Okay, for the passive transport, which according to what you know already, it's the linear, okay, the linear uh, uh uh, kinetic, which is again following first order kinetic. So by default, if I asked you according to whatever you know that the rate f at um, of absorption versus uh, concentration of the drug or the amount, if I am uh, telling you that the process of the absorption is passive or in other words it's following first order kinetic or in other words it's following linear kinetic what would be the profile that you are having here okay you should know by now that what you will have is this which is a linear profile okay so according to whatever you know it's similar one, first of all, it's the majority of the drug following uh, the transport of first order kinetic or passive diffusion, okay? The driving force is the uh, concentration gradient or what we call it sometimes downhill uh, movement of the uh, drug or the material, which means that we are moving from the high concentration of the drug to low concentration of the drug. And again, if we are talking about passive uh, diffusion or passive transport, uh, the uh, rate of the drug uh, movement uh, is following what we call it first uh, fixed law, uh, which is um, uh, you can uh, say that the rate of the um, uh, absorption or rate of the transport across the membrane as amount per unit of time, okay, um, um, and also, uh, it, this would relate the rate of the transport. Uh, uh, the flux will uh, have a presentation of the rate of the transport or this diffusive uh, rate and uh, sectional area. And you already know that this is the fixed uh, first law. Okay. Again, if we are talking about, we have it here. It's... In general, the flux, and here we are talking about the absorption uh, flux. Um, if it's following first order kinetic, it will be dm over dt over the cross sectional area of the membrane uh, or the uh, side that we are talking about. So the amount versus time or per uh, time, unit of time and the uh, cross-sectional area. This, the relationship would, would be proportional and here the relationship would be um, uh, reverse uh, or uh, reverse proportional reverse proportion. Okay, so the definition of the flux would be that the rate of the drug uh, flowing per unit of cross-sectional area. Again, rate per sectional uh, area. And in here, we are talking about, if we are talking about the membrane, that the drug is moving from one side to another side, and we are talking about uh, that the flux is proportionally related to the change in mass over the surface in time. And this is the same of whatever that is here in the 
uh, uh, equation that I mentioned to you. And if you remember that the flux following first order kinetic, uh, there are uh, many uh, conditions for the fixed law. One of them, uh, or many, let's say, uh, parameters or factors that would affect, such as the size of the material or the molecule, a spherical molecule, uh, the molecular weight of uh, that uh, material, and a lot of uh, so many other things uh, that you already uh, talk in, I think, pharmaceutical class or course so if we are talking about first order kinetic we are talking about our uh, passive diffusion we are talking about concentration gradient so it means which is uh, our uh, driving force which means that we need a high concentration at the first side or the apical side uh, compared to the uh, basolateral side okay or let's say uh, the donor side versus the receiver side, or the uh, GI versus the systemic circulation, to have some kind of transport uh, following the first order kinetic. And again, it depends on the um, uh, rate of the transport and to cross a sectional area. And we know that according the, to the uh, first fixed law that the thickness of the membrane is important. Okay, uh, if we are talking about the rate of diffusion, which again, we said that the flux is the rate of diffusion uh, per sectional area, and uh, which accordingly, if we are talking about the rate of uh, as mass per time, uh, we know that it's uh, related to the diffusion coefficient uh, and uh, cross-sectional area, the um, the uh, concentration gradient or the difference in the concentration between si uh, two sides and the uh, thickness of the membrane. So if we are talking about the uh, relationship, it would be directly proportional with the diffusion coefficient, with the cross-sectional area, and with the concentration gradient. And it's reversely related or inversely proportional uh, to uh, the uh, thickness of the membrane, okay? So if we are talking about factors that would affect the diffusion or the diffusion rate or absorptive diffusion rate or the first order uh, absorption uh, rate, uh, all of that uh, are like um, synonyms of the same thing, uh, we can uh, by... Uh, uh, by uh, determining or playing around or tailoring those factors, we may affect the diffusion or absorptive uh, diffusion. So if I want to increase, let's remove this. If I want to increase the rate of a diffusion, um, passive diffusion, I need to increase those factors and I need to decrease the thickness. Right, so uh, I may increase the uh, diffusion uh, coefficient of the uh, which is a factor that is related to the drug. Um, if I want to increase the diffusion coefficient, I need to have it with a smaller molecular weight because we know that the diffusion coefficient of a smaller uh, molecular uh, weight drugs would be larger, for example. Sectional area, usually the sectional area of the membrane is something that we can't control, but we can control the target of the drug that we are um, aiming. So, for example, we need larger sectional area, so we, uh, uh, sh uh, we choose the intestine rather than the stomach, or we choose the intestine rather than the skin, or the lung rather than the skin. Something like that. For the, um, the difference in the um, a concentration or the difference in the first uh, uh, part or first compartment versus the other compartment or other side of the membrane. Uh, so we need this concentration to be higher so we can have the driving force. So we need the concentration as at this side to be large so we can have uh, the diffusion and this happens by having larger concentration or larger dose given right as 
uh, administered dose. For the thickness, we need it to be smaller, right? So it the effect would be less on the rate of the absorption. And this, again, something that we can't control because it's a physiology of the body, but we can control the target that we are aiming for. Is, for example, intestine with a smaller thickness compared to the skin, with, which is large, um, a large thickness with large th thickness factors affecting the diffusion uh, rate and again we are talking mainly about passive pathways here or first order pathways we can see that the diffusion or uh, the diffusivity of the drugs uh, that is um, affected uh, by uh, or different with a different uh, um, uh, sites or route of administration for example the diffusion and the uh, pulmonary um, uh, pathways or in the pulmonary drug uh, delivery or pulmonary formulation is larger compared to nasal compared to the GI and um, let's say at the end compared to the transdermal. Similar uh, kind of things if we are talking about cross-sectional uh, area it's and the pulmonary is very large compared to uh, let's say the rectal and centimeter okay um, and we have cross-sectional area uh, that is for example here in nasal you know those are different uh, cross-sectional area that um, is large okay so you need to take this into consideration when we are talking about the thickness of the uh, membrane see the very uh, uh, thin membranes or very uh, small um, uh, or th um, uh, the edges uh, um, less in value and those for example pulmonary and intranasal compared to for example a transdermal okay so those are just examples I don't want you to memorize them uh, they are just examples of um, the effect of different factors on the uh, on each and every site on the um, uh, overall absorption uh, if it's related to the passive uh, pathways only okay again if we again talking about the flux okay rather than just the rate which is again it's rate over a right again if you go back it's similar okay i'm just having it in flux uh term we have uh again you have uh, a diffusion coefficient of the drug okay you have concentration at the first uh at the epical side or the donor you have it at, at the receiver side you have it uh, uh, you have here the thickness of the membrane and we need to take into consideration also the partitioning of the drug through mem the membrane because before we were talking about the membrane before adding the partitioning as just the drug move moving through the membrane from one side to another side but the the and this is not um realistic because we have membrane and we have the drug that is moving from one side we have some kind of partitioning through that membrane before going to uh through that membrane to the other side so we have a uh, concentration at this side concentration at that side and we have partitioning here so we need to take this into consideration so the partition coefficient which you know that is related to the concentration of the drug on in uh, oily uh, media compared to whatever that we have in aqueous media we need to add it and the uh, um, the flux so again the flux is rate versus um rate versus uh, sectional area we have diffusion uh, or surface area of the membrane we have diffusion uh, coefficient of the drug we have uh, 
the Barchenko coefficient of the drug, we have concentration uh, uh, gradient or the driving force or the difference between one side and the other. If we are talking about the GI, this will be concentration in the GI minus concentration in the blood or the plasma. So it could be concentration in the uh, GI and concentration in the plasma. And we have for sure the thickness of the uh, membrane. Okay, so we have, if we are talking about the um, uh, GI, uh, before we going through GI or not, if we take um, the, okay, if we take this, this, and let's, uh, I have it on the other slide. So if we are talking about, we said that the flux is rate over um, the uh, area, okay, the membrane uh, area, right, is rate over the surface area of uh, the membrane, okay, if we have um, again, if we have it in terms of rate and we have all of those factors and if you go again to the definition in each one uh, of each one of them, you'll have diffusion coefficient, area of the membrane, partition coefficient and thickness. And we know that all of them are constant for the same site and the same drug. So we can have all of them in what we call it as apparent permeability or permeability coefficient. So if we are talking about, again, rate of diffusion rate or absorptive diffusion rate, which would be equal to B multiplied to the difference in concentration or D M over D T, which will be equal apparent permeability or a permeability coefficient multiplied to the concentration, which would be multiplied to the concentration in the GI minus concentration and let's say plasma. Okay, and we said that to have um, passive transport, we need to have high concentration compared and the first uh, donor side to compare to the other side, which is the plasma or systemic circulation to make sure that we have that passive transport. So if we are talking about um, this math wise, this concentration would be low to an extent, which is our sink condition, because we have movement all the time at this side. So we can ignore it because it's small. So uh, uh, we can have this as the rate dm over dt, permeability multiplied to the concentration in the GI. Again, this is rate and we called, um, uh, we have this and we already mentioned that it's a group of constants. So it's constant for the same drug under the same condition multiplied to concentration, okay, which is concentration and, and the GI, okay. And this is similar to one thing that you know already kinetic wise, something that is familiar to you of the rate equal constants multiplied to concentration, or in other words, the rate is proportionally related to the concentration that we have. Okay. And, and this is just a constant, you can know that under those kind of condition, that the drug is following first order kinetic and this is the um uh, this is right or true or valid for the majority of the drug which again we have rate that is proportionally related rate of absorption that is proportionally related to the concentration of the drug at the gi or the site of absorption okay and this is in practice as i mentioned um uh, valid for the majority of the uh, drug because the concentration that we have in the GI is large when we compare it to the concentration in the systemic circulation, okay? But, and again, this is, uh, if we are talking about different pHs, different BKAs, it's similar to whatever you know uh, before uh, about the uh, partition uh, theory, pH partition theory, but you need to deal with it in a different way that is uh, related to the absorption, 
which means if we are talking about assets, weak assets, okay, pH equal pKa plus logarithm the ionized over the non-ionized uh, fraction or species, okay? So if I want the passive, again, we are talking about first order kinetic yet here. Um, if we want to increase the absorption, through the membrane, it, mean, it means that I need to increase the fraction or have a larger fraction of the unionized, which is uh, would be, and this would be preferred at lower pH. So if I want to target certain sites or certain parts of the GI would be the lower pH compared to the higher pH, because at higher pHs, okay, this, um, uh, a species would be uh, larger in as a fraction or percentage and it would be the the opposite if you're talking about the base okay so our weak bases but still in all of what i mentioned here we have let's say here one compartment we have elimination here we have absorption here and we we considered that the drug at this, let's say if this is um, a simulation of the membrane or the membranes that we want to pass, okay? We are considering the drug is available here to be absorbed directly through membranes. So if we are talking about, let's say here, we are just considering the drug is available to be absorbed directly before the membrane. And this is not true all the time because we have different processes that the drug need to go through before being available as, let's say, solution to be absorbed. Because, for example, we have, uh, if we are talking about solid dosage form, we uh, need to have uh, disintegration. Okay. And if after that, we need to have the solution of uh, or solubility, certain solubility of the drug. So, um, if we are talking about solid dosage form, whatever the type of that solid dosage for, form we need for the drug to go into a uh, disintegration process in which this larger part or larger particle uh, would go into smaller particles, then to go under the solution to be soluble or dissolved and the uh, media that we have in the lumen uh, of the GI to be able to be absorbed. And each one of those uh, process, each one of them have certain kind of kinetic that have their uh, 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 their uh, uh, separate and, or specific uh, constants and uh, kinetic equations in which um, um, they should be studied and um, specified before we reach this point as the drug is available to be absorbed. Okay, so if the drug is um, uh, is in solid dosage form, we need to take into consideration disintegration and dissolution until the drug reach the um, uh, the step or the uh, point uh, at which it's available to be absorbed or uh, let's say ready to be uh, absorbed. And again, if you are talking about uh, the solution or solubility of the drug rather than diffusion and absorption of the drug, it would be different, right? If I want to increase the dissolution of the drug, it means I need to I have more ionization of the drug to be more soluble if we are talking about weak uh, acids, and this happens at higher pH. And it would, would be the, the opposite if we are talking about weak bases, right? So if we look about the differences between um, whatever I mentioned for the absorption here compared to, whatever, compared to whatever I just mentioned here, we can see it's the opposite. So what we need to do, I mean if, let's say, we have absorption here as a process, and before that we have dissolution. I need the drug to be dissolved, to be available here, to be absorbed. And let's say for weak acid, to have, I need the drug to be dissolved to go into absorption. So for weak acid, to have more 
the solution, this should happen at higher pH, right? And if I want to have more um, absorption, okay, I need to have more of unionized or non-ionized species, which happens at low pH, okay? So what I need to do if those are usually opposite to each other? So that's what happens in the formulation of the drug. We need to have some balance between those two uh, processes in which to have the um, optimum dissolution with the maximum absorption that I need without any problems. Okay, so how do I have enough dissolution that is needed for the drug to be uh, uh, efficiently absorbed uh, at certain membranes? Okay, so... The other kind of or other part of the uh, transport uh, or transport process is carrier mediated. And one of the examples, as, as we mentioned, is the active transport, which needs energy. So if it's need energy, again, it's carrier or um, transporter mediated. So it's saturable or capacity limited, as you know. It's usually, usually considered as against concentration gradient may or may be not uh, as it's saturable it's competitive and it's site of um, uh, interaction between different uh, drugs example of uh, that or, or what we call it also nonlinear uh, kinetic okay because it's nonlinear anymore or not linear uh, michaelis minton kinetic which means that it's not as rate versus concentration is not proportional or not directly proportional anymore. Not a proportional anymore. Okay? Especially at large uh, doses. Uh, for facilitated transport, again, it's carrier uh, mediated, but it doesn't need energy. But because it's carrier mediated, it's a saturable um, uh, or... Um, I have the profile of the saturation or the plateau. Usually we have it as uh, down the concentration gradient, similar to the passive transport, but it's usually faster than transport. But it's important to remember that it's saturable. It's saturable because it's dependent on certain carriers. So it's similar to the facility to the passive transport, but it's carrier dependent, so it's saturable. That's why in this, you find that this, um, if we are talking about the rate of the drug absorption versus concentration of the drug, we have the passive transport, which is linear, or passive diffusion, which is linear because it's following first order kinetic. It's proportional as the concentration of the drug is increases, the rate of the absorption would increase because it's the... Uh, the uh, driving force. But if we are talking about carrier-mediated carrier transport, either it's active or either it's facilitated transport, okay, it would be a showing a nonlinear profile because it's carrier-dependent. So we can reach a point at which the carrier are occupied, fully occupied, so we reach the plateau. So we have the non linear kinetic okay and by this i will end um, uh, this uh, lecture and